In this video we're going to complete example one which is a statistical investigation. Now statistical investigations involve four steps and in this example we're going to follow these four steps and explore the correlation between a girl's age and height. So this is the investigation that we're going to explore here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to collect some data and we'll start by collecting data about a girl's age and height and you can do this either one of two ways. You can either do it using a primary source of data. This means actually going out there measuring the height of 15 girls and you want these girls to be aged between 2 to 15. So this could be family members, friends, people at your school. The second choice you have is to use what's called a secondary source of data. This is where you go on the internet where someone's already gathered this data. And you could find the average height of girls aged between 2 and 15. Now there are a couple of things that you need to make sure that you do correctly while you gather your data. Firstly, make sure you have a good spread of data. That means don't just interview a whole heap of people who are 15, 14, and 13, because they're the ages of your friends, and miss out on people aged 2, 3, 4, and so on. Otherwise, the dots on your scatter plot will be grouped too closely together. The next thing you need to know is that you need to gather data from reliable sources. This can become really difficult when you gather data from a secondary source. Some websites are not very reliable. Your data also needs to be representative of the entire population. This means you don't go to a family with lots of short girls or lots of really tall girls. You want to measure girls who are of an average height. All right, so I'm going to do a secondary source of data and I've found a website that has the age of girls, so from 2 to 15 years old, and it also has a list of their average heights. Now I want to point out that this is the data I'm using. I want you to use your own data, whether you use a primary source. If you're using a secondary source, I would prefer that you use a different website. So we need to record this data. We, we found that if, you're, if a girl is 2 years old, her height is 85.5 centimeters. So we'll record that down. A two-year-old has an average height of 85.5 centimeters like so. You'll notice when we put it in our set of brackets we have age first and height second. So I could do that again for let's say a three-year-old. They have a height of 94 on average. So I'll write that next. Three comma 94. Now I'm going to pause and write down all the other values. I want you to do the same thing except use your own values. They should be different to mine. Alright, so I've recorded down all these values. They come from girls age 2 all the way to girls age 15. But it's not very organized, so I want to put this in a more organized format. That takes us to step 2 where we organize the data. So I'm going to organize the data into the table below. We'll start with our girls aged 2. We found out that girls that are aged 2 should be about 85.5 centimeters. There's not a lot of room in my table so I'm going to round it to 86 centimeters. What about girls that are aged 3? That came out as 94 centimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and fill in the rest of this table. I want you to do the same thing. Remember that your values should be different to mine. All right, we've finished step two, and we're now going to move on to step three. Step three is all about displaying and summarizing data. So when we display data, we like to use things such as tables and graphs. And we're going to use a graph below. We're going to make a scatter plot. You might also notice that a table is a type of display, which is actually what we did in step two when we organized our data. So by organizing it into a table, we're completing step two and step three all at the same time. It also talks about summarizing data. And when we summarize data, we're talking about calculating things such as mean, median, mode, 
and standard deviation. Now there's no need for us to do that with this data. Instead, we're just going to construct the scatter plot. When we construct the scatter plot, we just focus on one column at a time. So when the girl is two, the height's about 86 centimeters. So we'll, we'll mark that here. So two is about 86 centimeters. When the girl is three, it's about 94 centimeters. Three, 94. I'm going to pause and fill in the rest of the scatter plot. I want you to do the same with your set of data values. All right, so we've finished our scatter plot here, and we can see that there is a very strong relationship between a girl's age and her height. We'll now move on to step four, which is about analyzing data. And when we analyze data, we are interpreting the data and, and giving it meaning. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make some calculations. So question A, we're going to calculate the correlation coefficient. Now I'm going to do this using the Casio calculator. I'm not going to make a video based on the Sharp calculator because I've already made some videos that show people how to use it. And this might be a good opportunity for people with Sharp calculators to see how this works on a Casio calculator and it might influence you to change calculators as well. So first of all, to calculate the correlation coefficient, we need to clear the calculator. So shift nine and clear number three for all. Yes is equals and reset, press the AC key. Now we need to get into statistics mode. So we go mode, statistics mode number two, and we click on this thing here, A plus BX, number two, A plus BX. And I'm going to write that A plus BX down. I've done this already with the Casio people, but for those who have a sharp calculator, you'll see, soon see why this is really useful. So number two for A plus BX. And we can see our columns here, our X column and our Y column, remembering that on our table, the top row is the X row and the bottom row is the Y row. All right. So we're going to enter the top row first, which is our X row. So we've got the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So we just go 2 equals 3 equals 4 equals and so on. I'm just going to pause and finish this. So those who have sharp calculators are probably noticing that the Casio is really good because you can double check that you've entered your numbers correctly. So we now move into the Y column, which is the second row, and we'll enter these values in. So 86 equals. 94 equals, and I'll just pause and finish it off. So I've entered the second row into the Y column, and once again, I can go through and check it just in case I've made any errors here. All right, we'll press AC to get out of the screen, and we want to find the correlation coefficient. So we go Shift 1, where it says Stat, and we want to go to REG or REG, which is number 7, and we want the correlation coefficient, which is the pronumal R, number 3. Okay, so we get zero point, let's do three decimal places, 0 0.994, 0 0.994, and that's a positive number, and we can see that because as the girls get older, the heights go up. Question B says, comment on the strength, form, and direction of the correlation. So for the strength, we're going to write very strong. It's, it's almost one, so it's a very strong relationship for the form at the moment it looks linear so for now we're going to say linear but the question we've got to ask ourselves is this if i went beyond 15 years of age would it remain linear and we'll talk about that a bit later but for now we'll just say linear it also wants us to talk about the direction of the correlation and it's positive it's going uphill We'll now move on to question C. It wants us to find the equation for the least squares line of best fit and sketch it on the graph in step three, which just basically means this graph here on the right. Now, usually this is a very long and tedious type of question, but not so much with the Casio calculator. I want to refer back to this A plus BX. Now, I'm, I'm going to change it around. I'm, I'm actually going to make it BX plus A. I'm just going to switch them around, which just makes this easier. And on our calculator, we're going to get out of the screen. We're going to go into stat, shift one, reg, number seven. 
and we're going to find A and B, so number 1 and number 2. So we'll start with A, which comes out to 78 point, let's just make it 78.1. So A equals 78.1. And let's find B now. So shift 1 into stat, number 7 for reg, and B is number 2, which comes out to, let's go 5.9. So B equals 5.9. And we're going to substitute these values into my BX plus A equation here. So B is 5.9. So we go 5.9X and A is 78.1. And for those people who are on a sharp calculator, this might look quite familiar with, to you when I put Y equals at the beginning. So the Casio calculator has a really good method for writing down the equation for the least squares line of best fit. Now we would also like to change the y and x. x represents the girl's age. Let's make that an A for age. And y represents a girl's height. Let's make that H for height. So we'll change our y for the letter H and we'll change our x for A, and we'll finish off our equation here. Now when we read question C, it doesn't just want the equation for the least squares line of best fit, which we've got here, it also wants us to sketch it on the graph. So we need to pick a couple of values, I think we'll pick a, the number 2 and the number 15. So I've just made a table of values and I'm just going to grab my calculator and work out what my height will be for an age of 2 and 15. And I'm just going to substitute it into my equation. So let's go 5.9, 5.9 times A, which is 2 times 2, plus 78.1, 78.1. And that comes to 89.9, .9, which we'll just round to 90. So that'll be 90. And now let's substitute. 15 in for our age. So we've got 5.9 times 15 plus 78.1 and this comes out to, let's round that to 167. 167. Alright, so we're going to put these two points on our scatter plot. So 290 would go about here. And 15, 167 would be this point just up here. And we're going to connect this with a straight line. And we just look at our line of best fit and just think to ourselves, does it look like a reasonable line of best fit? And it does. Let's now move on to question D. It says use interpolation to calculate the approximate height of someone who is 10 years old. So we find where someone is 10 years old, and we go to the line, our line of best fit, and then go across. And I can see it's going to land probably somewhere about there, just under the 140. So I'm going to say that it's about 138 centimetres. Someone who's 10 years old would be about 138 centimetres. There's actually two different ways you can do this. You can do it by drawing a line up to the line of best fit and going to the left. The other way you can do it is you can actually use the equation that we came up with. I think we'll do that for question E. And the reason we're going to do this for question E is we're trying to calculate the approximate height of someone who's 50 years old and we don't even have 50 on the graph. So we'll grab the equation that we came up with before, the least squares line of best fit equation, and we're going to substitute A or our age with 50, because we're looking at a 50 year old. So bringing up our calculator, we're going to go 5.9 times 50 plus 78.1, and it came, comes out to a whopping 373.1 centimeters tall. And basically, what we've done is we've predicted the height of a 50 year old to be close to 4 meters which is really tall. 
this brings us to question F, which says we can use interpolation and extrapolation to make predictions and conclusions. Explain why extrapolation was misleading for this example. And the reason it's misleading is because when you use extrapolation, and, and let's look at our line of best fit, as we extend this line of best fit, and 50 is way over to the right, we can't even see where it goes, it's going to go up really high, and it gets up around 3.7 metres, or about 370 centimetres. So why is this an issue? Why has this happened? Well, we know that when people get to the age of about 15, they stop growing. So it doesn't keep going up. As we go across, it might go up a little bit. It might go up a little bit, but it's going to start plateauing out like this. So it's not really a linear graph. It's a nonlinear graph. We can use this equation for values between 2 and 15, and it should work OK. But as soon as we get beyond 15 years of age, this equation doesn't really work. So what are we going to write in question F? We can say that the correlation is not linear. Therefore, once you get beyond 15 years of age, you can't really use this equation to make predictions. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.